Uh, my name is uh, Bella Aching, but I'm known as Bella Rafiki. And as we all know, Rafiki is a Swahili name meaning a friend. So most of the people think that I'm a, I'm a friend. And uh, I have a foundation that is called Bella Rafiki Foundation, in short form is Pirafo, that deals with economic empowerment of women and youths. Berafo started back in 2015 and we didn't really know what, where we were heading. So in 2016, I was among uh, Akili Dada fellows and they helped me organize Berafo to be what it is today. So we registered the foundation back in 2016 and um, we pick it up in 2016. By then, we were only doing economical empowerment of widows. And these widows, in one way or the other, they are affected uh, with um, HIV and AIDS. What we do, we do poultry. We do, we do agriculture in general. So it involves poultry, growing of crops, livestock keeping, and also we do trainings to them and we also do table banking. This is how they are able to make a living. I schooled back in the village in Homer Bay County. And after that, I came to Nairobi to do my high school. I did it in uh, Kebera, a school called St. Aloysius. Nowadays it's in um, Langata. After that, I went to Catholic University. I did community health and development. And from the environment, uh, you all know uh, the life in Kebera. So growing up as a young lady in Kebera, ambitious and uh, who wants to give a helping hand to everybody around her. I was involved in so many activities and um, partnering with different organizations as Polycom, Care Kenya by then. And this is what made me who I am today. Uh, Rafiki, I got this name from a, 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 a white friend. He came and he told me, you are so friendly. And many people also tell me that I'm friendly. And most of the time, my friend calls me Rafiki. And I also call my friend Osiepa. It's a little word meaning Rafiki. So this is how I chose this name. In 2009, when I was still in high school, I was so passionate about my community. And... Uh, from then, I just knew that I wanted to do something for my community. And this is what led me to do community health and development as well. After school, when I was 21 years old, I got a job in Naivasha as a social worker in a very big institution. It was called Children Village. My work was to assess the most needy cases in the community. After assessing these most needy cases, I bring them on board and I recommend uh, the directors to place them in the institution. So I worked as a social worker in that institution for one year. And after that, I went to another organization, which also is a, is a children's home in Busia. It's called Uzima Children's Home. And being able to understand the needs of the young children also pushed me so hard to do what I'm doing today because it's about the women and these are uh, um, the, the, the widows they are not able to take care of their children or somehow they are they are total orphans so it's something that I connected from what I was doing with the children and now I try to make the their mothers um, be independent and they they can be able to feed their families and take their children to school that is why I do the economical empowerment of, of widows. I never knew this foundation will be what it is today. And for me, it was the drive that my mom was a widow. And when my father died, my mom had to move out of the village, leaving me in the village. My other siblings, you see me, I'm, I'm talkative. And when you do something wrong, I usually tell you, I don't like what you've done to me, but in a very respectful way. So most of the people, even the relatives, I know, they were afraid. 
And when my mom left the village, uh, I think she went to Uganda. That is what she told me later on. I was left with my grandma. And later on, I came to realize that also her, the reason as to why she didn't stay in the village longer, it was because of these issues of wife inter inheritance, that she couldn't stay in the village because they wanted somebody to marry her and she didn't really believe in, in, this, in this ideology. So she got out of the village and um, came back later on when I, I was almost done with my, my school. So I saw how other women also were subjected to wife, forcefully wife inheritance simply because they were not able to give their family whatever um, they were not able to offer to their family like support and this is why they were being forced to do this so for me i strongly believe that if a woman is empowered more so economically this woman is able to to know who they really are and to stand firm for what they really believe in and if they believe in entrepreneurship like being independent this woman can be able to take their families to the next level the first project that i did was back in 2012 i just completed uh, high school then i went to the village and there were some two women whom i was really close to and i used to talk to them many times so i went there talked to them they told me their issues and i was like do you know what i think with my knowledge and the connection I've made in Nairobi, I can call some people to be training you in the village. One person who was in my mind was a friend of mine called Edita Vitalis. She lives in Kibera and she advocates for the girls and uh, feminist rights in Kibera. So I had her in mind that she can come because she was my friend. She can come, help me train the widows and just they get the knowledge to know what is going on outside uh, Homer Bay. And then I gathered like five women. The next time I was there, I gathered like 10 women. And today we are 50 women. We have, um, with the widows, I do the economical empowerments that we do first, the trainings and um, all the trainings, entrepreneurship, reproductive health, uh, things to do with human rights. Another thing that we do, we do agriculture. And under agriculture, we do poultry. Each widow was given uh, some chicken so they rear this chicken and they sell them locally just uh, within their the, the community and today we are doing livestock keeping and with livestock keeping we rear um, goats and sheep some of them prefer sheep some of them prefer goats so we rear them if the sheep give birth you take one you give one to the organization and this one that you give to the organization helps us to recruit another widow in the project so this is how it helps you and this you can be able maybe when you have a in school in uh, public schools the fee sometimes is seven thousand eight thousand ten thousand fifteen thousand a year so it is you can be able to sell this and uh, take your children to school and also feed them yeah and also we grow crops the crops that we've grown so well in my area it's sweet potatoes so when we grow sweet potatoes, we also go and sell. But these sweet potatoes, we've been able, we don't hire the land for them. They've talked to their family members and they've been able to be given a place where they can do the, 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 the farming. My passion is to see women being independent. And for me, independence comes in when I talk of financial finances. So I want to see Muso young girls being able to fend for themselves and standing for themselves. What I believe in, I believe in you taking care of yourself. And this is why most of the things that we do are things that revolves around making somebody understand everything is about me. It's not about another person helping you become who you want. Or it's not about another person helping you do what you want to do. It's about you as a person. I think one challenge that I had and I think we've overcome it, is that the widows saw a gap. And they told me, with us, however much we are trying to do this for our children, our children need to get empowered even more than us, so that they can understand our need 
and be able to make it better next time. So I asked them, what can we do? And they told me, in our schools around here, we don't have books. And even in the schools, we don't have enough teachers. So I think we need to make these children get enough knowledge to be able to see, to be able to be who they want to be. And also with them, they also address like even us, some of us in this group don't know how to write their names. But like one woman called, um, what is the name of this woman? Magdalena. She was, she's 65 years. She's the oldest we have. We have young widows and older widows. And she told us, even us, myself, all along, I've been wanting to know how to write my name. She's called Rosalia, not Magdalena. She goes Rosalia. I, I, I really want to know how to write my name. And also speak just little English. My name is Rosa Adiambo from Bella Rafiki Foundation. So they told me, what we can do, can you build a center where both all the community can gather just to get knowledge about things, about agriculture, the school children can get a place to, to read and do this. So I started, it. it was a very big challenge to me because I thought, how am I going to do this? So I started this campaign of building a library, the first ever library, community library that has been built in Homer Bay County. So not in Homer Bay County, in, Carbon, in Homer Bay County, Kabondo Kasipul. And uh, I built this library. It was launched back in 2019. And today, children, like when they close the school, we, we can get even like 70 children from all over coming from different places to come and study in the institution. Not only the, the, the children, but also young women and also the community people who wants to get equipped to knowledge. So this for me was a challenge, but we addressed it. Another thing that I can say is um, one challenge that we have is lack of um, people who can train us. Because sometimes it's not easy to just talk to somebody and then nowadays people think about money so much that even if you approach them, the first thing will be we need a transport, we need accommodation, we need this, we need this. They are not, we don't have people who can just volunteer and do this as frequent as possible. So, But this is something that I feel should be done each and every day. It is not something that I should sit and organize myself then look for somebody to pay to go and do this. It's something that I feel should be done, should be, it should be able to be done regularly. Uh, my advice to people who wants to help the community or to that young woman who is going to watch this today, I'll tell you, if you want to do something, just do it. Don't think about finances. Don't think about what people will say. But if you just believe that what you want to do is worth making somebody's life be what it was, it was meant to be, just do it. And to the widows outside there and to all women, what I want to tell you is that uh, women are very powerful and uh, everything is in our mind. Once we manifest this in our mind and keep it in our mind, we will do it. We are powerful. We are more than the world can imagine. And women should come out to support each and every woman and after supporting them, women should be able to know their limits. Once the limit is there, just say it is no, it is no. When I quitted my job to start the foundation, actually I quitted my job because I was coming to join Akilidada, the 2016 cohort. And I was like, okay, how will I eat? How will I do what? But a woman called Jena Nyango, he's in Kibera, helped me. Because by the time I quitted my job, I had a place to stay. I was staying in her office. But with staying in our office, I also have in mind that I, I'm doing what? Back in Homer Bay, those people need me. My family was not there. I have not been raised with my siblings. I've not been raised with my mom. I've been raised with relatives and well-wishers and myself. Yeah. So my family, my family was not there. But after going through all this, I've come to understand they were not there for a reason. My siblings had to go and stay with other people 
to survive. My mom had to go to another place to survive. And I had to be where I was to survive. And after knowing this, that is why I'm making even them, I'm bringing them to understand that we have to do this together now. What Taitama's success is um, knowing, fulfilling your heart desire. To me, that is a success. Fulfilling your heart desire. If you plan to do something, then you do it without being discouraged. You do it without thinking about negativity in it. You just do it because you believe in it. To me, that is success. Fulfilling your soul on what you think of. What you really, uh, what you really, yeah, what you think of. First, you identify. Then, you go for it. That is success. Just being determined and ambitious on what you want to do already helps you. Just having that thought first is having that thought that I want to do this. Then going to do it. Even if you fail, but you've done it and you've done it the way you wanted to do it, to me success. We have so many women outside there who are very good. They inspire me each and every day. And not only women, we have men also who inspire me every day. But today, I will say I want to be my own role model. My highlights with the uh, projects with Berafo, we were able to go to Poland to Environmental Conservation COP 2024. And I was so happy when my idea was featured in the report of COP 2024 of inclusivity, inclusivity, inclusivity forestry. What I said about inclusivity forestry was like, you see, this is a project that we did. So I was only telling them what we did with the widows that I have not mentioned. We went to schools because we work with some of the schools in the village. We went to schools and in these schools, we were able to train the children, the younger ones, to, to help us in the environmental conservation. And how we did this, we encouraged them to plant trees. So with the children back home, we gather that most of the children have planted trees in their homes. And there is a child who planted more than 200 trees. And ourselves, we've planted more than 1,000 trees in different schools in, in, in Kabondo Kasipo. I wish I was told how powerful women are, yeah. And I wish I was told how powerful believing in yourself is. Because this is something I've come to gather on the way dealing with people every day, working with people so closely, has made me understand that it begins with me. First, it's like accepting yourself. You see, like people who have AIDS, you have to accept yourself that I have AIDS for you to survive taking medicine every day, and also you can be able to, to help another person who has the same condition as you. So it begins with yourself. It's me. Accepting who you are and just knowing with, what, with who I am, you can have disabilities, you can have anything. But just accepting that I am this person and this is what I want to do because I was meant to do this, because this will fulfill my soul, that's enough. <laughs> One lesson I've learned is to keep quiet and listen. Sometimes we tend to judge a lot what other people say, but each and every person makes sense. To some extent, if you decide to listen, you'll find out that each and every person makes sense. And there is something you can learn from each and every person. How, whatever the background, the status, each and every person has a meaning in whatever they say. So if you listen, you'll be able to identify this from, from people and learn a lot. I wish I've, uh, there's a moment I felt that, but I'm working, I'm working on it. I recently told some of these old men who believe in me in my village that I want to be in politics. <laughs> um, a few said, 
they still have that notion on women. Most of a young woman who is 28 like me, they say, no, why, no. I think, don't just go for it. But for me, I've seen the gaps. And I think the only person who can fill the gaps is me. The way I've, I've been able to fill some of the gaps that have been there, including water, education, I also feel that I can fill the gaps that are there. So when they told me that I can't, I felt bad. But again, I know it is about me and it is about what will fulfill my soul when I see the community achieving. So I'm working so hard to make them understand that I'm the best person that they will never regret if they put me on that position. Uh, on social media, I'm on Instagram. Our name is Bella Rafiki Foundation. On Facebook, Bella Rafiki Foundation. And of course on WhatsApp. <laughs> oh, we also have a website, www.berafo.org. Yes. <laughs>